Here's more. Laparoscopic surgery is a minimally invasive way to enter the body to do general surgery cases, whether it be on uh, different solid organs like the gallbladder or liver or the colon or the stomach. Uh, operations that typically would take a large incision in the front of somebody's abdomen we can do with smaller incisions and less pain afterwards. The benefits of laparoscopic surgery are much smaller incisions, uh, cosmetic appearance, and the ability to recover from a surgery that might take four or five days, you might recover in two or three days. Uh, it's a little easier on the patient. Robotic surgery is a relatively new thing and it's come on the scene in the last probably five to ten years. The advantages to the robot compared to traditional laparoscopic surgery is the, is the technological advancement. For example, you have a, probably have a smartphone. Um, a flip phone is a phone just as the same as a, as a smartphone is, but it doesn't work quite as well and you can't imagine your life now without a smartphone. Just like technology is affecting things like cell phones and, and other areas of your life, it's, it's affecting medicine too. For surgery specifically, the robot is a huge jump from laparoscopic surgery because we can see better, the camera optics are better, the computing power is better, and overall that translates to a better result in some cases. So the robot is not actually performing the surgery. It's still me, it's still my hands. But I'm using the robot as an extension of my hands to do things in a more fine and technical manner inside than I could do outside or with the laparoscopic tools, which are, are fairly limiting. Preoperatively, it's just like a normal surgery. I go and see the patient. The patient's getting IVs from the nurses and, and all the typical things any surgical case would do. Uh, when they're wheeled back to the operating room, the difference uh, starts after the patient is asleep and already on the table. I guide the robot in over the patient in the position that I need the working arms of the robot to be to have a successful surgery. Uh, and then I step away from there and then step inside the working console of the robot, which is in the same operating room, but is you know, three, four feet away. I'm still in control the whole time. I'm still in control of the procedure. I'm still in control of the patient. However, I use the console for the working arms and the movement inside. The camera is one of the biggest advancements of the robot compared to traditional laparoscopy. The laparoscopic camera is like a TV camera. It's a two-dimensional camera. It doesn't have a right and left lens. A uh, robot camera is a 3D camera. It has a right and a left lens. It adds depth to the field. When I'm looking inside the robot console, I can see as if I had my head peering into the abdomen. And that's very helpful for a complex surgery. A good example of a surgery that can be done a number of different ways would be a ventral hernia. Like, let's say you've had a surgery on your abdomen and now you have a bulge and a hernia. That can be fixed in a traditional open surgery where you make an incision right over the abdomen, go in, fix the hernia, laparoscopically where you do it with small incisions and from the inside or even robotically. The advantage of the robot in that situation is I like to close the hole, meaning the hole in the muscle needs to be closed in order to get a good repair. It's a little difficult to do laparoscopically, but with the robot, it's really easy to close that and then put mesh on top of that. That's gonna be the most durable repair and offer the best long-term results with a shortened recovery time when compared to a big open surgery. The reason people recover a little faster from laparoscopic or robotic surgery is the incisions are smaller, so they might have less pain. They can get back to doing their normal day-to-day -day things a little quicker. Not every surgeon feels comfortable with robotic or even laparoscopic surgery, uh, so patients should always seek a second opinion. There might be more than one way to do their surgery that may result in a better outcome for them. They just need to be informed and, and speak with their surgeon, speak with their primary care doc, and if they need to, seek a second opinion. That's, that's never a bad thing. Good robot cases uh, where I think that it's useful would include incisional hernias or, or hernias in the abdominal wall. Um, complex surgery, for instance, uh, Nissen repairs for reflux problems or repairs of the diaphragm or removal of the spleen. Uh, other ones would include complex colon cases, reversal of colostomy. Um, another area where I use the robot is to remove the gallbladder with one incision, uh, which is great for cosmesis and uh, the recovery is fairly easy. I use one incision, I hide it in the belly button, the patient never sees it uh, as it heals, and it's, it's the same surgery, same outcome. Uh, I think that the adoption of technology should be case by case, definitely. Uh, I think that Robotic surgery, though it does offer some advantages, it's not for every patient. Uh, the patient needs to be informed and speak with their physician about what the best choice is for them in their particular operation. It does have great advantages in terms of visibility for the surgeon, the ability to do more complex things inside the body than we ever could, either open or laparoscopically. And I think that it, it offers the room for advancement that we haven't seen before uh, for a long time. And we'll see where it goes. Not all doctors are trained in, in uh, robotic surgery. 
uh, you need to find someone who, who is well trained and those uh, doctors are available on the website. Here at Scottsdale we have a robotics institute that's made up of a multitude of doctors from different specialties. We're committed to making sure robotics is applied to surgery in the correct way. Uh, we have a list of those surgeons on the website on shc.org where, where we can be found and uh, patients can make informed, informed decisions and find a good surgeon there. We hope you enjoyed that story.